So if we don't eat, um, it's first thing in the morning, if we haven't eaten, it's called fasting. An ideal fasting insulin should be less than five. And if your insulin is not less than five, it's not ideal. So people are like, well, what happens after I eat then? So if you just eat pure dietary fat, a little bit insulin comes out. But if you have a little bit more like protein, a little bit more insulin comes out. And if you have carbohydrate, much more insulin comes out. And if we eat the standard American diet called high sugar, high fat, a boatload of insulin comes out. Because we have to fix insulin problems, so let's review what insulin does again. Insulin tells your body to make more new fat, and insulin tells your body don't burn any fat. So if you are to eat food, what food should you eat then? It's the food that makes the lowest insulin, so you favor protein and dietary fat. Then you say, well, what should I avoid then? The one that have the highest spike, which is standard American diet, or the carbohydrate-rich carbohydrate diet. So if you eat a, a, low, uh, a low carb, high fat, then that's called keto. You know, if, it, if you keep it under 20 grams, and for some people, they eat no plant food at all. So it's called carnivore diet. So that's number one. So that's the first thing we should do is, is eat food that makes the least insulin. But there are second part to it. <clears throat> if we have excess weight, if we have extra weight that we want to burn, we have to fast, guys. You know, sorry, time restricted feeding, it, it's a must. If you are overweight and if you really want to burn some of the store fat, we have to stop eating. And then so it comes in many flavors. It can be called time restricted feeding, 18-6 or one meals a day. So, but that is number two. So for people who are eating the standard American diet, please don't try the fasting right away because it's not easy. You have to get your insulin down first. So we talk a lot about reversing diabetes and obesity. So, um, <clears throat> so what we are doing currently is, you know, if you have diabetes, we push pills, and after the pills don't work, we push insulin. And then we tell people to eat a low-fat diet. You know, as we all know, if you do low-fat, it's high carb. <clears throat> and then, um, but there are other ways that you can reverse type 2 diabetes and obesity. You know, gastric bypass, you know, we talk about it. it you can reverse it. <clears throat> but the other one is very low carbohydrate diet. You can reverse type 2 diabetes and obesity. Preferably with intermittent fasting. Okay, so I'm going to do something called a root cause diagram. <clears throat> so first is, you know, someone might have diabetes type 2. And then after you have diabetes type 2 for some time, you know, you start having, you know, um, kidney damage, you know, heart attacks, drugs, and things like that. And then next to that might be high blood pressure and then cholesterol problem. And if we have high blood pressure and cholesterol problem for a long time, then we have a heart attack or a stroke. And then on top of that, you know, we can have fatty liver, you know, the same thing that all the speakers have been talking about, the fatty liver, and then um, <coughs> sorry, degenerative arthritis to, um, <coughs> to autoimmune disease is having very much having to do with something in common. So that's what I'm trying to show you. You know, like heartburn, um, asthma, sleeping problem, and reproduction like Jackie talked about, <clears throat> mood disorder, even cancer, and Alzheimer's. They are all driven by something. What are they driven by? Obesity and central obesity. But what drives obesity or central obesity then? It is these stuff. So it's a long list. You know, it comes from you know, glycation or, or, or the sugar damage your joints to mitochondrial dysfunction to membrane instability. But the biggest of them all, if you can see it, is hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance. So the chronic root causes of these, what are they? 
it can come from many things. It can come from poor sleep, not, you know, sleeping is important and then because stress and smoking, tobacco and everything in between. But the biggest root cause of them all is the standard American diet. And that standard American diet drives hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance. And that will drive the obesity or central obesity and everything else shows up after that. So the key goes, we have to fix our diet first. That's the most important thing, okay? <clears throat> so here's the day, here's where it's important for me. So in January of 2016, I weighed 170 pounds. And then for an Asian, I didn't look fat. <clears throat> so, <laughs> uh, and then, but what happened was my A1C was 5.8. My hemoglobin A1C was 5.8. And then what did I do? As everyone else should know, hey, if you're, if you're a little bit fat and you're having, you know, um, pre-diabetes, you need to eat less and move more. What happened? You can see my weight goes down a little bit, but then roughly a whole year later, practically nothing changed. So yes, I was doing the eat less and move more, and it didn't work. And that day was February 14, 2017, and that's the day that my world turned upside down. <clears throat> and what was that day? That day was like, look, diabetes is reversible. I'm like, no, it can't be true because I um, just graduated in 2010. I have, <clears throat> I have all my CMEs and, and, and all of them I don't need to renew it yet, so I should be really good. <clears throat> But the dilemma is I've been really working hard on this and nothing has changed. And that day was like, no, it's insulin, insulin resistance problem. So what did I do? I started a low carb, high fat diet, you know? And then, you know, I leveraged intermittent fasting. And within a short three months, I dropped 20 pounds. And it's all in the middle. It's all in the middle for me. And then my A1C dropped from 5.8 to 5.4. And then, and then with any diet, people say, well, Dr. Fung, your weight's going to come back up. I'm like, really? They said, oh, yeah, it, you will fail. And then so that was August of this year, 150 pounds, you want to see 5.2. So, so, so that's my personal story, right? So other people would say, Dr. Fung, you know, you're a doctor, you have all this knowledge, you have willpower, so that's why you keep it down. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's not, come on. <clears throat> so, so this is, um, so I, um, I start implementing this with my patients, you know. So start out with like diabetes type 2 and obesity and, and we're going to review all these. And then so what happens next is that uh, we put diabetes type 2 in remission. And if people have diabetes type 2 early and they can have uh, kidney damage, we'll reverse that too. And then um, Dr. Thorne talked a lot about high sensitive C-reactive protein and measurements. Yeah, we got that too and it drops down. And then, um, and then I done medical gastric bypass. You know, I help people lose 100 plus pounds. And then we also do things with the family. You know, change, change the nutrition in the family and we're gonna see cognitive improvement and all. So for the next few slides, that's what we're gonna do. <clears throat> so this is a 62 year old person came in to see me at the beginning weighing 244 pounds and if you can look at the insulin level it's 29 29 and look at A1C 6.8 and shortly after about four months now drop 46 pounds the insulin was like 29 now 7.2 it's not ideal but the A1C is 5.4 and look at the microalbumin urea, the kidney damage, it was 37, now it's negative. You can reverse this stuff, guys. You can reverse it. Here's another person, came in at 280 pounds, and then, um, and then again, insulin very high at 19. Remember, ideal is less than five. And then we help patient lose 37 pounds, and then, um, and then it last insulin was 3.8. 
and prediabetes, 5.9, now it's 5.2. Okay? So, why are you showing me this? Because a lot of times, as doctors, we just talk, you know, we just talk. <laughs> Sometimes you have to show people the results. And here are the results. Here's another person, you know, um, 179 pounds, um, diabetic, A1C at 6.8. And then drop 29 pounds, and then A1C at 5.4. Going on two years, two years. Here's another person, started out 291 pounds, look at A1C, 10.4. And look at my, the kidney damage, 189. Health patient lose 86 pounds, and then um, and the A1C 6.5. But the but the key go look at the microalbuminuria. It's not there anymore. It's not there anymore. Okay, so that's why we do this. And the patient's 76 years old. <coughs> Here's a person who's um, um, who came in, you know. 205 pounds, diabetic, lost 40 pounds, and then A1C at 5.0. And then the patient is 82 years old. Okay, 82. So you are never too old to do low carb. Okay? All right. Here's one, here's one, it, it's really interesting. 13 year old, 13 year old came in and said, Dr. Fung, I want to change what I eat. I'm like, why? Why do you want to change what you eat? And he said, I am sick and tired of being fat. Like 100 and 185 pounds. Look at the uh, insulin level, roughly 30. 30 insulin level for a 13 year old. Okay. That is where one in three children have metabolic syndrome, and he has it. And within a short few months, we help patient lose 26 pounds, and the A1C dropped to 10. I'm uh, sorry, the insulin dropped to 10. And then the next person said, you know what, I'm going to do what you want to do too. Started out at um, 285, dropped 20 pounds, insulin again dropped. Inflammation, high sense of C-reactive protein dropped. But these, they related. It's son and father. Son said, Father, I am sick and tired of being fat in this family and I'm going to change. And the father said, I don't know how. So let's go and ask Dr. Fung. So that's what happened. Okay? <laughs> All right. So here's another person, you know, A1C 5.9, you know, and then next thing you know, A1C 5.7 dropped 51 pounds, diabetes reverse. So here's another one, A1C 7.6, and then dropped 51 pounds and diabetes reverse, A1C 5.3. <clears throat> and then so, <clears throat> so the key goes is people say, well, you know, how long have these people been on this? Like two years, two years. And then so, so my mission for them when they see me is transfer my knowledge into their brain and make it their knowledge because that's what they need to stay low carb. Um, here's another one, you know, um, initial, um, only pre-diabetic, uh, only pre-diabetic, dropped 36 pounds, and then um, basically same story. Here's one when people were actually on insulin and the A1C. <clears throat> so, so 71 year old came in, we're at 220 pounds, uh, let, look at the insulin level like 100, and then the patient A1C was 7.6 on 60 units of insulin shot, okay? And then within a short two months, we took off 60 units of insulin and A1C 6.9. Like, wait, 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 wait. The A1C is better and you actually don't need insulin. The answer is no, you don't need insulin. <clears throat> Here's the skinny fat. That's me. 
Okay, so the called the Tofi. So um, this person is diabetic, bona fide diabetic. A1C 9.3. Only lose 21 pounds. And then, and then A1C at 6.1 and we stop the glipizide. The next person is, they would become diabetic if we didn't do anything. And then drop from like 190 pounds, 164. But look at the inflammation though. It was 4.5, last is 0 0.18. You don't have to be very obese to be very inflamed. That's the big picture. Okay? <clears throat> This is near and dear to everyone because ultimately either we die of a heart attack or we lose our brain. <clears throat> so <clears throat> this is a this this patient came in and then he has a family history of Alzheimer's. Three other sisters are in nursing home already, can't take care of themselves, and he's acting up strange. And so he has two chaperones with him with every visit. So initially, I said, okay, why don't we check your metabolism? He's pre-diabetic, pre-diabetic. But then what did you do? I helped him lose 47 pounds and the pre-diabetes is gone. And guess what? He drives himself to the clinic. Okay? So you can, you can reverse mild cognitive decline, but don't wait until you're acting weird to change, okay? <laughs> We're almost done, we're almost done, guys. <laughs> so, here's a patient, you know, started out 317 pounds, went down to 191 pounds, and look at the insulin levels, start out at 20, last check is 10, pre-diabetic, and then look at the inflammation, eight, eight, and now it's like two. What happened then? We helped patient lose 126 pounds. And look at the graph, it, it, it's almost, you know, straight down. And the catch is, patient's only 36 years old. 36 years old, okay? So, a picture speaks a thousand words, right? <clears throat> so, this gentleman was going to have gastric bypass surgery. And the surgeon said, hey, we're going to put on my low-fat diet, we'll watch his calories, and then, you know, um, we'll cut his stomach. I'm like, no, please don't do that. Let me see you first. <laughs> and then I measure his insulin level. It's like 17, and then look at his inflame, and then um, within a short six months, he lost 80 pounds. And then on top of that, Roughly one year later, instant drop from 16 to 4.4 to 2.1. And look at the inflammation, it's gone. Look at the triglyceride versus HDL ratio, it's like awesome, okay? <clears throat> so the take home messages are these. <clears throat> First is that, you know, if you've been following the dietary guideline or the, um, or the my place stuff, and then you're getting sick, you know, time to change is today, you know, start tonight, okay? And then <clears throat> if you've been eating the standard American diet, you know, like high sugar, high fat, and we get sick, please don't use exercise to balance those calories because there's a 99% failure rate in a year. No one can run away from the bad diet. If you have diabetes or obesity, you know, um, <clears throat> don't treat with medicine because you're still going blind. They're still going to cut your foot. <clears throat> um, <laughs> reverse it. <laughs> reverse it with a lifestyle and leverage intermittent fasting. And then you say, well, I'm not diabetic, but if you have metabolic syndromes, you know, it's not your fault. You know, it's a biological problem. You know, fix it. Hyperinsulinemia, insulin resistance. And lastly, lastly, if you're waiting for health to come through a bottle, I don't think it's going to come. It will not come, okay? And you're like, well, how come it's not going to come? Because it's a dietary disease. We have to fix our diet. So, I'm done. Um, so, if you need... <laughs> If you need help, you know, if you need help, you don't know what to do, you know, what am I talking about and all that, you know. So, um, 
I have a clinic, you know, I have a clinic right here in town. I measure all the factors I'm talking about, I'll guide you. And then lastly, here are all the resources and more, you know, you know, Dr. Atkins book and with Dr. Westman and Dr. Fung and then many other books and then that I can teach you and guide you to safety. So that's it for me, guys.